we are really looking for institutes uh, which have a very strong academic record. And uh, this is what we are looking for in the end uh, to distill the research which is done all throughout Europe uh, into uh, uh, policy recommendations for European policymakers and of course for all the many national policymakers which in the end make up uh, the European uh, solutions. I mean, we have just the European Council today and tomorrow. This is a <coughs> perfect example of the way national policymakers uh, then come together uh, to uh, make the most important strategic decisions about the future of the EU. In the meantime, you have seen also there are some uh, copies of our very first product, uh, which we are launching today and uh, about which I wanted to just say a few words before uh, our main speakers uh, later uh, will give their views. Um, as Clemens already said at the beginning, uh, we now have an opening to make progress on the euro. But there are very many different ideas what that actually means, progress. Um, and uh, that's why we are actually uh, quite uh, happy to be able to report that we could put such a paper together with six different co-authors just to show that one can agree on some of the, the basic issues. Um, as you see, we don't have very precise policy recommendations, do this or do that. But already I think it is important uh, to identify the major policy issues. And the main issue we wanted to start with was the uh, fiscal governance of the euro. And we thought it would be useful to uh, start by acknowledging that there is, exist in the minds of people two concepts of the euro. Uh, one was the one originally proposed at Maastricht, that you put together your money, but only your money in the monetary sense, <laughs> not the money of the, uh, uh, um, of the taxpayer and that uh, the central bank has a very limited uh, function, namely just to guarantee price stability. As you know, there was a nice paper around that time which asked whether the ECB was actually a central bank or a monetary policy rule. Um, and then uh, the other view is that uh, we have an example of a big monetary union which works, which is the United States. So all we need to do is to check what are they doing over there and we need to do the same thing here. And that of course gives you a very different view of uh, what is needed uh, to uh, complete uh, monetary union. And then uh, if one looks actually more carefully at uh, these two concepts, uh, one sees that uh, the original Maastricht uh, vision had uh, one uh, blind spot, uh, spot, I would call it, namely the importance of financial markets and the degree to which they can lead to spillovers. And that uh, is, uh, I think, was driven home to us very forcefully, <laughs> I would say, by financial markets uh, during the, the, the euro crisis. And that's why we then got uh, the, uh, the banking union. And that, of course, brings us to the interaction between monetary and fiscal policies um, and the question of uh, how does one organize that, um, the question of uh, the backstop, fiscal backstop for the uh, banking union. And then finally, if you want also the question of uh, what is the nature of sovereign debt Implicit in the original Maastricht version was one where sovereign debt is no longer uh, safe, totally safe, because implicitly in the Maastricht at least was no bailout and therefore government can go bankrupt. But then we saw that this is not such an easy proposition to, to implement and therefore the question arises whether one needs a sovereign debt restructuring mechanism, for example. Um, these are some of the, uh, I think, the, the topical issues which will uh, come up. Um, I don't go uh, even into the more broader issues of whether we need, just in analogy to the U.S., uh, a general fiscal policy. 
a fiscal capacity for the euro area. Um, I think we'll come to that later in our, in our discussion. But I just wanted to introduce uh, to you the, the major issues, um, which uh, I think are the ones uh, which uh, will have to be addressed by any future uh, design for uh, reforms. And we are very much looking forward to our two key speakers, who I think can give us really the uh, perspective uh, from uh, perhaps different point of views, but uh, both with the aim of seeing what can we do right now to give us a stronger euro. And with that, perhaps I hand back to Clemens, who can introduce our speakers. Thank you.